Hi guys, so today's video is going to be both a non-spoiler book review and then a little bit of a spoilery chat for The Queens of Lear by Tessa Grattan. This is a King Lear retelling, but I personally am not familiar with the original story, so I can't comment on how much it deviates from the original, but the setup for this is that there is a king of this particular island that the island in this story there's a lot of magic with the island, which I'll, I'll get into in a little bit, but this king is old and he's kind of going crazy and his three daughters are all very different personalities and two of them are very close and they think that their father killed their mother and so they are kind of just like, hey, can we just get this old man out of here? And then the other sister is the perfect daughter who has been taking care of him for this whole time basically that her two sisters have turned their back on him. And so those two sisters kind of resent her, but she's very sweet and very caring. And there's just so much familial drama in this story. A big thing in the book is that throughout, you do not actually know for a lot of it whether the king was the one that was actually responsible for the death of his daughter's mother, his wife. But you kind of are getting because he's sort of losing it and going crazy every now and then he says these things that you're like did he kill her so i really enjoyed that element i thought it definitely pulled you in and constantly kept you wondering and you can see how the uncertainty of this has affected each of the daughters the oldest daughter absolutely believes that he is responsible for killing her. She believes that because of the magic of this world, there are star prophecies that a lot of people are like, you were born under this star, which means this is what your life is going to mean. And then there are things to do with the actual earth itself and the roots and the trees and the wind, and it kind of has its own language. It's very magical magic, so it's not really there's rules and limitations and you can use it and you have powers. It's not quite like that. It's almost like witchcraft type magic and earthy magic and it's very interesting but very atmospheric. It definitely plays a role not only in the story but in the writing itself, which the writing is absolutely stunning in this story. But getting back to the oldest sister, she absolutely hates anything to do with these star prophecies because there was a prophecy that their mother would die when the daughter turned 16. That's what happened. And the daughter thinks that her father just killed their mother to make this prophecy come true because he is very, very devout when it comes to his faith. As a result, this particular sister has become very harsh. She's kind of hardened her heart to everything and everyone except the middle sister. They are very close. And her goal, her name is Gayla, her goal is that she is determined to take the throne. But the way their society is set up is you kind of have to have a man with you. You're not really supposed to be a queen on your own. So she ends up marrying someone for power. And there's so much just within their relationship there's so much familial drama with the, the three sisters and the dad but then there's all this drama between this girl and her husband and then the middle sister she just kind of latches on to her older sister and she is this extension of her in a way and she actually adores her husband and loves him very much she's also very in tune with the earth magic but she is struggling to have a child she's had a lot of miscarriages and the deal kind of between her her name's regan and her sister gala is that gala will become the king and she doesn't want to have any children of her own because she's kind of turned herself into this warrior queen type and her sister will end up having children that can then become the heir except for she's not really being able to have children currently and it's definitely weighing on her youngest sister does not believe that their father killed their mother and she has remained very faithful to these star prophecies as well and she's trying to take care of their father now in his old age and they just hate her they treat her like garbage and she's so sweet and so nice but she also kind of excuses her father in the fact that he is becoming less capable because he's kind of going crazy she sort of just doesn't really want to acknowledge that and it definitely leads to some pretty unfortunate situations when he starts making some bad decisions as a result of his madness. I don't know about you, but I feel like all of that already, if you, if I were on the opposite end and I was listening to 
the description of the story, I'd be like, wow, that sounds really interesting. It sounds like there's so much to it. And there is. There's a lot of nuance. There's a lot of complexities within these characters. But not just these characters. There are so many other people in this story that play a role. And there's a lot to do with love and and falling in love with someone or loving somebody as a as a family member. And there's a lot of just crazy things that end up happening. But weirdly, despite that, this book is incredibly slow. So the writing is gorgeous and the way that the author is able to make everything so lush, the way she's able to describe how something feels, all of that is really exceptional in my opinion. But then it moves so slow. It moves so incredibly slow and it took me forever to read this book because while I was really intrigued and I was always really enjoying get to, getting to learn more about these characters and why they are the way they are and why is this person's relationship so difficult and did the king kill his wife? All that kind of stuff. I was intrigued, but man, sometimes you just, there's so many descriptions and they're so beautiful that it almost starts to feel like poetry. But I do want to say that it's one of the most beautifully written books I've ever read. And I found the magic to be really different from a lot of the other books that I've read. I just think it was an amazing story. It was an amazingly crafted story. But weirdly, because the writing is so beautiful, it's kind of more formal. You will probably really like this book if you, one, like all the familial drama, if you like complex, complicated relationships and characters and nuance. If you like all that stuff, I think you'll want to give this book a try and you'll probably really enjoy it. But there's pretty much no action. I would say there's not a lot of moments that make you really want to turn the page. And when you have this more formal writing style, sometimes you almost feel this detachment from the characters. I think it's just so different from a lot of the other fantasy books that are that are out there. And we've started to become, I think, very accustomed to fantasy being extremely entertaining and engaging and making us want to turn the page. And because this story is one that you kind of just sit with and you reflect on and you admire the writing, because it's one of those stories, I think that is why if you look on Goodreads, the Goodreads rating is pretty darn low. And I'm honestly kind of shocked because there's obviously so many opinions are just, they're subjective. They're opinions. It has nothing to do with the literal quality of a book and quality is a subjective thing too. But this book is so well written that I'm like, man, it does not deserve that lower rating. I am going to get into a few spoilers now. So if you don't want to be spoiled for this story, don't keep watching. But all right, I... Mora Maros, that guy was the man. I don't understand Elia and the whole ban thing. So at the beginning, Ban and Elia, I was like, I hope they get to be together. They were torn apart by their stupid dads, you know, whatever. I was, I was definitely rooting for them. Then he does that thing where he betrays his brother and his brother's just this kind of goofy, nice guy who's charming, but he's He's really kind and he's always been good to his brother and Ban's just like, I'm going to prove how easy it is to just make people not like each other and stuff. And I'm like, dude, that was really messed up. And throughout the story, Ban just proves that he's this needy little brat who just needs to be loved. And when people do love him and when people are, they believe in him, he ends up being like, well, but this person believes in me right now and they're right in front of me. So I'm just going to betray this other person. And I didn't understand how Elia could... Her friend Afa, her her little servant girl, even told her, wait a sec, so you're upset at Moromaros, the king, for having a spy, but you're not mad at this person who is a spy turning their back on your island, your kingdom. You're not mad at that guy, but you're mad at Moromaros. And she's like, I'll see what Ban has to say. And I was like, Elia, Elia's blind spot is Ban. That's how I felt. Now, some of you might be like, no, I hate Moromaros. He's the worst, but I felt like that dude was great. Anytime there was a scene between the two of them, I was like, just, can you guys just like, just smooch already? Also, I'm curious if you guys, how many of you are familiar with the original? I would love to know how different it is or how similar it is. But the whole thing with the queen having 
killed herself so that it would fulfill the prophecy and then people wouldn't question her husband and her children. I felt like wasn't the best plan. I mean, it was really admirable and it was sad, but that scene where you see her, you finally get her perspective and you see what happens and her husband wakes up and he's like, my love, you're alive, you're alive. Oh, and he's so happy. And then... And then she's like, you should have told me that you came up with a plan. And granted, I feel like he probably should have told her that he came up with a plan. I was like, man, this feels very Shakespeare. Because Shakespeare's all about if people would just talk to each other, I feel like. I, that's what I feel like a lot of Shakespeare's stories are. Things going wrong because people can't just open their mouths. Obviously, it happened though. But I feel like Brona, Ban's mother, the witch lady, she could have told somebody. She should have told Gala. Because when she sees that Gala is becoming kind of a monster, she should have been like, Gala, your dad did not kill your mom. Then she could have told Regan, hey, Regan, your dad didn't kill your mom. And then maybe they wouldn't have all turned against each other. I just... Brona, you know what? I think Brona is the ultimate person to blame here because she... I mean... What the heck? Why would you not tell the daughters? Because she eventually tells them. And she tells the, the uh, K.O. Oak. She tells that guy. She's like, by the way, lover, this is actually what happened with your sister. But sh don't tell her daughters because let's just let this all fall apart. Thought that was really dumb. She ended up telling Elia in the end. And then she kills Gala at the end. And then Regan, whatever. I just feel like Brona... Reflecting on it, I feel like she's kind of the worst. Anyway, I'll cut myself off before I get too frustrated with uh, some of the people in this story. Definitely let me know your thoughts on all of this. As always, if you want to chat spoilers, just make sure you write spoilers and then enter a bunch of times. Thanks so much for watching though. I hope you have a great rest of your day and I'll see you guys later. Bye.